everybody kind of knows me, Jim Wenzel. I don't know who doesn't. <laughs> everybody? <laughs> okay. I carve birds, whoever doesn't know me. This is kind of what I do, little songbirds and stuff. So what, what I'm going to do today is um, burnishing, which I don't know if many people have heard of it or done it. People that have done my class know about it. But what it is, <coughs> is after you get this bird all carved, it's a nice little songbird, <coughs> I carve out a tupelo. So it's a tight grained, very nice carving wood, even grained. It carves really well unless it's um, got little blonde streaks through it. Then you can get harder grained. You know, so w with Tupelo, the term is white is good. You know, white is right with Tupelo. You know, that's what you want. You want a white wood, real light, white and light. So what'll happen though, if you get grains through your wood, which all wood does that, no matter how good a Tupelo you buy, you can be carving through a bird or fish or whatever, and you'll get a nice grain right through it. And there's nothing you can do about it. So my buddy that in Montana that taught me to bird carve, he said, let's, he burnishes all his birds. He only carves songbirds. So when you get the bird all carved, or if it was a fish or whatever, you burnish it. And what that means is you're taking, I got this large one. I don't use this <laughs> on this, a little too big. <laughs> what I would use on this bird is something like this dude right here, the smaller one. And what this is, this is, a, this is maple. Maple's really hard wood. So I always make these burnishing tools out of maple, just out of blocks I have in my wood shop. I just cut them up real small. I brought a whole bunch of pieces here. And, uh, all different size. Depends what you want. But I made this tool out of this block of maple. So what you want to do, you know, and what, what the burnishing will do when you make this tool, you can pack all the grain down. And what it does, if you get soft spots, and hard spots, it'll take the soft spots and harden them up. So when you're burning, if I'm burning with this burning pen and doing fine burning, and I'm burning on a hard spot, then when I hit the soft spot, it'll sink in, and you'll make a groove. Mm -hmm. So you want, I don't know if people that have burned before, that's what happens. So I don't do anything in burning or painting before it's burnished with a burnishing tool. That's just my rules. <laughs> That's just what I do. So <coughs> this one is a really cool size because if you got an open wing bird like this is, open wing there, or if you have a fish with, you know, fine fins, fine areas to get into, this long dude right here, this will burnish all the way in these little tight spots. You know, so I started making these in all different sizes. When we did the class, we only had one size. And I kind of developed it a little better. <laughs> so, so when you make these things, now, now I made this big monster dude out of this block of wood. See? So, and this monster guy, if you're carving a larger, like an animal, horse, bear, or whatever you're carving, this will burnish really quick. Where this dude, if you're carving something this big that you want to burn, that would take forever. So I thought, hey, let's do this guy right here. And this one, you can put right in Fordham. And you can just plow right through it, and this will burnish it real well. And then when you burnish something, after it's burnished, you'll notice, you'll notice there'll be little valleys here and there maybe where it was a soft area and it packed the grain down. You know, so you might, after I burn it, sometimes I carve a little more. You'll carve it out. You know, when you get a groove going, like if I had a groove going down the bird there, you know, you carve at a 45 degree angle to that groove so you don't dig another trough. You know, you carve right on top of the hard part. And then I'll carve that smooth again, then I'll reburnish it just a little bit. And then when I do that and it all is smooth, then I know it's all the grain's packed real nice. So when that's done, then I can go and burn or whatever I want to do or paint. And the paint, if you ever painted something that's not burnished, It'll suck in real hard in one spot, and it won't in another. That's because the grain is softer or harder in certain areas. So that's why burnishing is really important, and no one ever really talks about it. So <coughs> what you want to remember when you're making burnishing tools, though, don't make them out of drill bits. 
Drill bits bend. They're not made for high speed. Don't make them out of drill bits. It's real tempting. So what I did here on the little dude, I had some stones. You know, you can get these stones for next to nothing, but these are made out of shaft stock. They won't bend, you know, when you really put the screws to it. So this stone here, this is kind of used. I don't know if you can see that, but it's junk. <laughs> so what I'll do, let me get my glasses on. What I'll do with that stone, since it's goofed up, I'll just take a hunk of steel, stone, hammer. There we go. I've got a shaft for a burnishing tool right there. Okay? And that was out of a stone. I don't even buy stones anymore with these things because I just don't like the way stones work. Because what we would do in a class is we would take the stone and all the open grains in it. Sometimes it would cut, sometimes it wouldn't. So we would take the stone and I would always go on the side of my wood block and pick up some pitch from the pine and quote, load the stone up. So it would, would carve more evenly. So I thought, why even do that? Just make them out of wood. So why bother? <laughs> so, so that's why I started making my own burnishing tools. So, okay, so that's how you get the shaft for the small one. This is just an eighth inch shaft stone. You can get anywhere for 50 cents. But the shaft stock's really good. It won't bend. Now this one here, this is a piece of quarter inch. And this is a dowel pin. And you can get these at that uh, production tool supply on 44th Street, here by the airport. Because this is made for tool and dies. This is a two inch by quarter dowel pin. And these are made for dies. You know, so th these don't bend. <laughs> these are really tough stuff. So, and I got a quarter inch because that's what fits into Fordham perfectly. Where did they go? I'm, <laughs> I had a box of them I got at an auction. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't think they're more than a dollar or so. They're pretty cheap okay. from what I understand. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's what I use for the big, big gun right here, okay? So what I'll do when I go to make these things, I'll take the old handy dandy drill here. Well, where's my pencil? Right here. And say I'll, m here's one I constructed the other day and I used epoxy, but I did it the other night so the epoxy actually should dry before this one I made with the epoxy not dry and it's I heard it's not safe so <laughs> so these for our demonstration I did this the other night and let the epoxy sit a day or a day and a half so what I'll do is I'll take this um, you want a decent cut on the end so I'll make I'll make a little one here okay so this is a square piece of wood I just cut on the table saw or the band saw and you draw an X, oh, gotta get my glasses on so I can see it. You go corner to corner. Okay, so when I go corner to corner, what that does, you know, I put an X in there, that gives me the exact center of this piece of wood. No matter, no matter what shape the piece of wood is, I'll get the exact center if it's, you know, not as fat one way or the other. So now I've got the center of that wood. I take one of these T-pins, you know, these little hobby pins you get at Hobby Lobby or wherever, and then I'll stick that dude right in the middle, just like a little awl. Round it out, and that looks pretty good. So now I've got the center of that with this little pin marked, okay? And then I'll take the appropriate bit, which this is an eighth inch drill bit. This is a standard eighth inch drill bit. Put it in my cordless drill. Set it on the table. Try not to drill into my hand. That looks pretty good. So I, what I did, I just started drilling a hole in the middle of it, okay? And it's not rocket science. You just drill a hole in it as straight as you can. Oh, and this trick I was messing around with at home. If I'm going too crooked, so I'm going a little crooked there. So now I'll adjust it a little bit. That's, that's not bad right there. 
But that's how I get how I get a hole in this thing, basically. It's pretty simple. I'm not going in too far. I went in about a half an inch on that. You know, it depends how long you, you want enough to the shaft stock to go into your machine. You know, you don't want to drill a hole that's clear up in this thing. You know, so I drilled the hole about about that far in. That's probably about a half to three quarters of an inch in the piece of wood. So then I'm not going to mix the epoxy because it stinks, you know, but I would take this two part epoxy, take my bit, lay it on a hunk of paper, mix it up, insert it in there, and just pound that dude in there. Okay, that's how I get the shafts in these things. Pretty simple, and this is a little one. See how small that piece of wood is? That wasn't very difficult to do. So, okay, once that's done, I would do the same process on this. Center it with the X, start out with the small bit, drill a hole, or you could put it in a drill press. As long as you have this cut straight and this cut straight, you could put it in a drill press with a quarter inch bit and do the drill and do the same thing. So that's how I get this dude and this guy right here. So. I'll show you on the one that I epoxied already. This one's all hardened, ready to go. So what I'll do is, uh, hmm, the only time you'll ever see me carve with the knife. <laughs> Carving glove, don't want to cut myself. You know, just shave, shave the corners off it. There's several ways of doing this. You can do it this way. Here, I'll cut it off quick. But you know, it's nice to have it in a long block of wood like that, so you can handle it. You don't want to cut it a little piece right away because you'll be drilling through your hand. So you want a long piece of wood like that. You can always cut it off of that guy. So I'll cut that off quick. There's several ways to round this. Depends what tools you have at home. Oh, that maple is hard. Okay. You can do it with the drill. You can do it on a piece of foam. I did it on a table at home, but it was so loud. I brought a piece of foam for here. And this is just any old sandpaper you got laying around. Doesn't matter. See, I'm starting to get it smooth. Oh, drill this. But it's starting to smooth, get smooth. Now you can do it that way. You can turn it in a drill. This is a cool way of doing it. You can carve it with this way. So basically, I'm making a little mini lathe here. It's starting to get pretty round. So now what you can also do, like see this one that where did I put it? This one I made just a straight taper. Now you could even put a ball on the end of this. I'll do it with this one. You could put around this end off. Then I can carve partially down the end of it. See, I'm starting to make a little ball on the end of it, okay? So then I would probably go back, you know, I would probably mount this in my NSK. That, was, that worked really good. But I wouldn't crank it. This thing goes to 30,000. I'd turn it to about 10. That's about right, right there. See how I'm making a custom burnishing tip. See how easy that was? 
It took five minutes, okay? And then when I get this, I'm not gonna keep going on this shape, but when I, if I got this to where I wanted it, I would still, I still like pine. Still like to put it against some pine and try and get some pitch on it because it really smooths the maple up. I still use a piece of pine at the end. So that right there is how I made a little miniature custom burnishing tip. You know, it was easy, it's cheap, and that works good for fine detail stuff, but then the big dude. This is the guy that a lot of people can probably use. And this one, I would probably do this. This one at home, I actually, <laughs> I took my bandsaw and I drew some lines on here while it was still square and I cut the four corners off to get my shape going. Then you gotta make sure you do the end first before you, and then I took it and I turned it on the bandsaw and took the sides off. That's a little dangerous, you know? <laughs> so you can take a knife and take, just take the corners off or take the old Fordham. You just work on it a little bit. Kind of, it's pretty simple. And you just work on whatever shape you want. You know, but I'm not gonna keep going on this because <laughs> it'll be dusty in here. But um, that's kind of how I, this one though, that's how I got that shape out of this guy right there. You know, and this is a pretty good sized one. So now I can mount that in my Fordham, which I can't find my key. <laughs> well, don't matter. But I can mount that in my Fordham. It'll chuck right in there. And when I go to burnish something, I can really hog away at it. You know, so I can burnish something, and you can see the difference. I'll turn on my burner, and I'll put this one back in my NSK. I can just see it even out the grain, it's shiny. You can't see it there, I'll pass it around, but it really makes a difference. And stones, they work okay, but they don't pack the grain. You're still carving with the stone where this doesn't do that. This will pack the grain. That's why this works so well. And I'll just burn a little bit on here and you can see the difference. Crank that dude up. and then I'll burn in an area where it's not burnished. And you can see the difference. I'll pass this around if you guys wanna look at that. But you can see the whole difference in it. So that's kinda what I do with burnishing. You can make your own tools. And if you're just painting something, if you're not burning it, I would still burnish it. Try it. The paint will flow even. You won't have soaking spots you know, spots that really soak in or spots that glaze over, you know. So, that's kind of, pardon me? Can you burnish bark? Never. Try it. Report back. <laughs> you never know. No, it's not. No, it's not, but you can burnish, you can do it with basswood. I've never done it, because I don't carve with basswood, but any wood you can do it with, you know, so. I would, I, I would because, you know, when you carve with any knives, you can't get it perfect. You know, people are sanding it. Try burnishing it. <laughs> you know, whatever works for you. But I would burnish it. I burnish it. Before you, before I texture, texture or after? Before, never after, because you would lose your texturing. Well, depending on what. Never after. I always burnish before I texture or paint. That's just what I do. You, sealing, the grain. sealing the grain. You're packing it down. Yep, you're evening out, evening, evening out the grain is what you're doing. You know, you're taking that out of the equation. People that have done my class know the difference it makes. It makes a tremendous difference. 
Now, Jim, do you seal those burnishing beams with anything other than just fine pitch? Never have. Yeah, just try like sanding seal or whatever. On I don't think you'd want to because you'd transfer that when you heat it up to the wood. I wouldn't do that. I would just use pine pitch. Just get one nozzle. Mm. Just a, this is a hunk of two by four that I, you know, made my fancy tool holder. You know, <laughs> but you can see all this. <laughs> this is my, you, you've used this. Oh, yeah. You've used this piece of wood. <laughs> so that's what I seal it with, just a little bit of pitch. You know, you can play with it, mm -hmm. you know. And then I, I was going to try putting some stropping compound on this. I don't know why that wouldn't work. You know, I think that would work really well. If you put some stropping compound on it, you could almost not really carve with it. You know, but sorta. You could try it. I haven't tried it. I have not tried it. But like a Zam type strapping compound, or that you know, I thought those. Yeah. You. Tr yeah, pine pitch is resin. Yep. So you try whatever, but these work great. So they're cheap. You know, and it it works for me. So <laughs> that's about it, folks. Any more questions? No? What kind of, what did you say that is again? Tupelo. Oh, okay. oh, thi oh the, this is, maple. this is pine. Pine, yeah. This, but these are all out of maple. This is, maple. this is hard maple. Yep. It's the only thing I've ever made these out of is hard maple. Because it's harder than any wood you'll ever carve. Guaranteed. You know, <laughs> so that's what we've always made these out of. And it works really well. So, and it lasts forever. I, don't ever, don't buy stones. I don't buy them anymore. This is the way to go. Yep. You were talking about when you burnished that you were having uh, where the hard veins were at. Yes. Did it depress Correct. the stuff so much that they would recarve? Well, I mean, wouldn't you be better off rather than recarving? Because I find that when I'm, because I'm with you, I'm a power, I'm a mostly power car, mm -hmm. that most of the things leave too much mark in the surface. <laughs> then I have to go back to it and stone it again. Wouldn't I just be better off just going back and using a stone on it rather than the recarve? I don't use there? I don't use stones anymore. What what I would use myself? What I use if I get a hard spot after it's burnished? I use one of those um, cross cut cutters, like from Keldon. Yeah. Those steel cutters. I never use stones anymore. And you take off the high spots. You know, carve right 45 degree angle to the high spot, not in the groove, so you're <laughs> making it deeper. Yeah. And then reburnish it, and it'll be gone. That's what I've done. Works well. But I, I don't use stones anymore. I'm not a fan of them anymore. And I'm going to try making some miniature ones. I haven't done it yet. Some really tiny dudes for around the beak. Because you get around the beak there, and you're done. And it's like you touch it with the stone. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so I'm trying. I'm going to try burnishing. I've always burnished the beak. But I'm going to try carving a little bit with a fine burnishing tool around the beak and just see. I'm gonna make real little teeny ones. So, and you could make a teeny one on the one I was working on. You know, you could just carve a little teeny tip in this thing. You know, in a stone, you really, you can shape stones, but then they get brittle, you know, and when you fire up the fast speeds, when you grind them down, they can get dangerous, they can fly out. But this is a piece of wood, you'll be okay with this. So, but play with this, this is cool. <laughs> I'd say about a third. I think this turns at 35. It's about 10. 12, whatever sounds right. Um, that's 35. That's too fast. I'd, no, you'd have to really put the screws to it. No, 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 you can't. No. So, yeah, I'd say around 12. Somewhere in there. Whatever. I always, I don't know. I just go, oh, that sounds good. You know, <laughs> I don't really think about the speeds. Whatever, and you know, you play with it, and if it's jumping around, turn it down or turn it up. <laughs> yeah, gourds are so hard. Yeah, try try the burnishing on that too before you, if you paint them. So it could work on anything. Works great on songbirds. So and fish, I don't see why it wouldn't work on fish or anything you do. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, I have totally stopped using stones. I don't even do those anymore. Uh, you know, I've just smashed them all, and I've got to make all burnishing tips out of them. So, so and stones are so cheap. You know, you get them for 50 cents, then you get a great shaft. But don't ever use a drill bit. 
you just touch it and they'll bend and they'll whap, 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 you know. <laughs> Don't ever use a drill bit. They're not made for that. So, is that it? Anybody else? What's it called, a larger snap shot? It's a dowel pin. Yeah. Yep, like a, it's just a dowel pin, but they use them for machining, for making um, dies, you know, for manufacturing. But uh, that supply house right by the airport there. Is that the corner of 44th? Or correct. Or? Yep, exactly. They'll have them there because they supply <laughs> the tool and die places. Yeah. So they'll have dowel pins there. This is a two inch, two inch by quarter works great because it, these are like within ten thousandths of an inch too. Yeah. So it fits beautiful in the bottom. So, and a two inch is just about right because you want about three quarters of an inch there and the rest you can chuck up. So, other than that, that's about it. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Five minutes epoxy is ten second yeah, yeah, when you epoxy this stuff, Leave it sit a day. I don't care if it says 10 second epoxy. Just leave it sit a day. I didn't do it, <laughs> but you should. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. So that is that, folks. Burnishing 101. <laughs>